Hi, today we're going to look at Unit 10, Day 6, Surface Areas of Spheres and Hemispheres. Our objective is today we will apply surface area formulas to spheres and hemispheres. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to find the surface areas of both spheres and hemispheres. So starting with information about the spheres and where the formula comes from, we're going to watch this short video. This is a circle at the moment, but I'm about to make it into a sphere, so... Look, ta-da! It's a sphere! Okay, I can do this a lot better with a pencil than with a, um, than with a whiteboard marker, but you get the idea. Depends on where the light angle is. Exactly, it's all about that. Now, at the moment, we're focusing on surface area, surface area, just like we did with the cylinder. So you might recall, for a cylinder, you needed two measurements, right? to know how wide the cylinder is, so that's the radius, and then you need to know how tall the cylinder is, that's the height. height. Very good, okay? So, radius and height. But when you have a look at a sphere, you have a look at a sphere, what measurement is it that tells us how wide it is? It's the radius, right? But then when you think about how tall it is, well, that's the same, right? That's the whole idea of a sphere, no matter which way you turn it, it's gonna be the same. So therefore, Around here, let's draw a circle. Actually, I'll choose that goes around, like I guess the equator of the sphere. Okay. So what I've got here is the largest circle that can be made all the way around. So it's kind of like the equator. Uh, this has a special name, by the way, which we're going to explore a little more next year. It's called a great circle. Uh, as opposed to a small circle, for example, if, if this were actually the globe, right? Um, you've got up the top here the Arctic and you've got the Antarctic. Have you heard of the Arctic Circle? Have you heard of that phrase before, right? So the Arctic Circle is a circle up here that when you're above there, you're in the Arctic, right? Well, that circle is a lot smaller up here than the equator is. Does that make sense? So this is the biggest circle I can make. Now when you have a look at this great circle, in fact we might even label it great circle. It's fantastic. The radius of the great circle is the radius of the sphere. Okay. So actually my sense is a little bit off. Let's see that. Once you know the radius of the sphere, the surface area is really, really simple. The surface area is very closely connected to the area of a circle. What's the area of a circle again? Pi r squared. The surface area of a sphere with the same radius is 4 pi r squared. That's it. Okay. Now, as I have um, said to you before when we did measurement earlier and when we had a look at the cylinder this week, um, I think one of my goals is for you not just to know what is right, but to feel that it's right. Now, I'm actually really cross because um, I, I made this early this week and literally 10 minutes ago as I was walking up here, a year 10 boy ran into me and put a big dent in it, or a few big dents in it actually. But um, anyhow, it wasn't that good to start with, as you can see it's a bit pointy, so we'll just work with it. So here's my sphere, okay, here's my sphere. Now, if you look closely, I mean, this is the, the hardest part, when I was I was joining this together for a bunch of sections, and then uh, I glued all the insides together, and then when I get to the last one, it was hard, so I, I taped it. So it's a bit shoddy, but I want to show you, when you take a 3D shape, and you look at the surface of it, and you unfold it until it's flat, right? What do we call that? It starts with an end. Net. A net, very good. So I'm going to show you the net for this shape. The net looks like this. Okay. So here is the net, and in fact, if you look closely, you can still see, you can still see where those horizontal lines are and how they correspond to here. There are nine of them. We could have made more, but it would have made more taping. Okay. So this, when you glue everything together, turns into this, right? Now you're like, mm, is that four pi r squared? Now it doesn't look very obvious from here because pi r squared is that circle, right? So I went one step better. I took the same net and then I cut it apart. Okay. Now this is up this way. This is these nine pieces, and I've sliced them into lots and lots of little sections. And please don't ask me how long this took because it took far too long. And this is the four pi r squared that comes from these once you cut them apart. So can you see? I think you just like Can you see? Circle? Right? Great circle. Do you see it? Right? So this goes around the equator, as it were, if I, if I put it flat. 
okay? But um, the wonderful thing about it is you can view it from any angle and it's the same great circle, okay? So four pi r squared, I hope when you sort of go to the, um, the formula sheet you think, okay, well, this is the thing I'm going for. I hope this is the image that comes into your mind. Um, so, that is, so I might stick it up somewhere, even though this is not even a room, just so it's a mental visual cue for you. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, one, yeah. This is better, right? Okay, so, it's a really simple idea. That's kind of it. So I want you to have a go at using it. Just before you do do that, I'm um, very closely related to you need to draw this with me. Um, closely related to a sphere is half a sphere. What do we call half a sphere? Hemisphere. A hemisphere, right? So can you draw one of those underneath this? <laughs> Yeah, semi-sphere would be like, well, it's a semi-circle, right? So that seems like a natural uh, name to use. But no. Now, now <laughs> you can see here, I've sliced my sphere in half. It's a rice It's a, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to view this as a solid, so it's not hollow underneath. So I've got the same radius here. Now, what might be the surface area of this thing? Okay, we will talk about the surface area of a hemisphere in just a moment. Right now, let's focus on just the surface area of our sphere, 4 pi r squared, as was demonstrated, demonstrated in the video. Let's find the surface area of each sphere below, starting with A. So we know we're going to use the formula 4 pi r squared. When I look at this figure, my radius is going to be from the center of the sphere out to the edge, and I know all the way across is 15.6 inches, that's the diameter of the sphere. So to find my radius, I'm gonna take that diameter and divide it in half, so my radius will be 7.8 inches. So in my surface area formula, surface area equals four pi r squared, I'm gonna replace the r with the 7.8. In my calculator, I'm going to square 7.8, which is 60.84. So now I have my surface area equals 4 pi times 60.84. I'm going to multiply that to the 4. So I'm going to do 4 times 60.84. I am not going to put the pi in my calculator. So I have 243.36, and notice I wrote the pi next to it because I did not put the pi in the calculator. This is going to allow me to have an exact answer. My units here are since its area will be inches squared. If I would like to put this in the calculator, 243.36 times pi to get an approximate answer, I will get an approximate surface area of 764.538 square inches. All right, let's try another one. Let's look at B. For B, I can see they gave me the radius of 3. I want to find the surface area of the sphere. You have two minutes to try this on your own. About one minute remaining. Thirty seconds. And 
and we should be prepared to show our answers in three, two, one. Let's check our answers. So my surface area formula for pi r squared, I can see my radius is three, and three squared is nine. Four times nine is 36. My units will be square feet. And if I want an approximate answer, 36 times pi is 113.097 square feet. How did you do? All right, let's move on to hemispheres. So a hemisphere is half of a sphere, kind of like a semi-sphere, but we call it a hemisphere when it's three-dimensional. To find its surface area, we have to look at the situation of the half of the sphere we're working with. There's two types of surface area when working with a hemisphere. Without the lid and with the lid. So think of like half of a sphere as like a bowl. It can have no lid and so just the plastic part of the bowl. Or you can have a lid where you've put a cover on that bowl. So you have just the sides of that hemisphere, or you end up with a base. If you were to turn these bowls over, the one with the lid would have a base included. So just like with our pyramids and our cones and our prisms and our cylinders, with our hemispheres, we're going to have a lateral area, just the sides of the sphere, and we're going to have a total surface area where we include that base, we include the lid, the circle. So the lateral area, just the bowl part of the surface area, is just one half of the surface area. So if I look at my lateral area, it's going to be one half the surface area. My surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared. Half of 4 pi r squared is 2 pi r squared. So that's the formula we'll use for lateral surface area. Your hemisphere formulas are not on your formula chart. The sphere is 4 pi r squared. So when you have to do the hemisphere, you have to know that the lateral area is half of 4 pi r squared. When you add the lid onto the bowl or onto the hemisphere, it's the total surface area plus we're going to add the base, which is in the shape of a circle. So it's going to be the total of the half the sphere, so 1 half of 4 pi r squared, plus you're going to add the circle base, so plus 1 pi r squared, plus 1 circle. So 1 half of 4 pi r squared, we already know is 2 pi r squared. If I add another pi r squared to that, we'll have a total of 3 pi r squared. Again, this is not on your formula chart, so you'll have to reason this through when being asked for the total surface area of a hemisphere. All right, let's find the lateral and surface area of this hemisphere below. For my lateral area, remember it's half of 4 pi r squared, so 2 pi r squared. And for my total, then we're going to add another pi r squared to it, for 3 pi r squared. Take these two minutes to see if you can find the lateral and total surface area of this hemisphere. One minute remaining.
30 seconds. All right, you should be ready to check your answers in five, four, three, two, one. Let's check our answers and see how we did. We should have gotten the radius to be one foot. So when I put one foot in for each R, when you square one, you still get just one, and one times two is two, one times three is three. So two pi feet squared and three pi feet squared. When I put those in the calculator, I get approximately 6.283 square feet for my lateral area and approximately 9.425 square feet for my total surface area. The next one is a common type of problem that we see. Find the radius of a hemisphere that's given a surface area of 2,463.009 square centimeters. So they've given me the surface area and I need to find the radius. Now, which one did they give me? Did they give me the lateral or the total? Recall, when we did surface area, when we first started surface area and lateral area, we said we always use the total surface area unless it's specified to use just the lateral area. Since they didn't specifically say I'm just doing a bowl or I'm just doing lateral, then I'm going to say it's the total surface area. My formula for total surface area is S equals 3 pi r squared. I want to know what's the radius. I know the surface area is 2,463.009. So I'm going to replace the s with what I know it equals. That 3 pi is being multiplied to the r squared. I need to get r squared by itself before I can get r by itself. So since the 3 pi is being multiplied to r squared, to get r squared by itself, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication. I'm going to do the division property of equality and divide by 3 pi on both sides. When I do that, if I put that in my calculator right now with the pi, I'm going to end up having some rounding error. and I don't want any rounding. So I'm going to leave that as 2463.009 divided by 3 pi so I don't have any rounding. And that will equal r squared. I don't want r squared, I just want r. So I'm going to unsquare by square rooting both sides of my equation. When I do that, if I square root again, I'm going to get decimals that I don't want. So I'm going to write the square root of the fraction 2,463.009 divided by 3 pi centimeters equals my radius. Notice it's not centimeters squared right? Because my surface area was centimeters squared, but then I square rooted it. So now it's just plain centimeters. Radius is just a centimeter length, right? It's not going to be squared. That's my exact answer. If I want an approximate answer on this one, I can put it in my calculator. I have to be careful and make sure that the whole fraction stays under the square root. And also, when I do that, I want to make sure that when I divide by 3 pi, I divide by the whole thing 3 pi. So we either need to hit square root and then control divide so we can see the fraction set up in our calculator. Or when we do square root of 2463.009, if we just hit the divide key, we have to make sure we do parentheses, 3 pi, close parentheses, and then you might still have another one to make sure you're inside the square root. When you hit enter, you should have 16.166 centimeters, just plain centimeters because again, it's a length, not an area. Okay, so if you were in class and you were working with the whiteboard and you have written on it to do any scratch work or to share your answer, please make sure you clean it off and put the eraser and the marker back in its holder. Our objective, let's review it, was to apply surface area formulas to spheres and hemispheres. And you should now be able to find surface areas of those spheres and the hemispheres, whether it's lateral or total on your hemispheres. 
You'll show me you can do this by completing the independent practice to, for today, which will be due tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching.